Welcome back to Chasing Grace. In the last video, we got our engine running and successfully made it off the dock, feeling like our renovation was finally finished. Then I quickly ran us aground in the Nero sandbar. We pick up the story with our rescue from the legends at Towboat US. If you're a first time boat owner and you don't have a towboat membership, trust me, get one. Bow to port again. Is it, hold on, I think, is it Jimmy Buffett or Alan Jackson? I don't know who Alan Jackson is. In the words of Jimmy Buffett and or Alan Jackson, <laughs> keep it between the navigational beacons. Alan's right, guys. I could blame it on losing my electronics, but the first rule of the water is to keep it between the channel markers. I guess some of us have to learn the hard way. Now that we've been pulled free, we still aren't in the clear. We've got about 500 miles to go to Fort Lauderdale, and first we have to navigate the Wapu Cut. A beautiful waterway with ripping current, shoaling, and two bridges for us to pass through. And we haven't even fixed our electronics yet. Start opening at 12.30. Uh, please stay on channel 9 for instructions. Copy that. Standing by. I've got to say, these drawbridges used to terrify me. But each time we pass through one, it gets a little less nerve-wracking the next time. It helps that I've got a crew to help guide me through and my buddy Will from Towboat US literally escorted us through the cut. Yeah, we're good. It's gonna be fun. Wow. <laughs> it honestly probably is like four feet. It's probably like four yeah, it's like four feet. Alright, so what happened was we fucked up. Um, the wires that we ran for the NEMA 2000 cables that connect all the BNG electronics, they're run in this steering compartment under here. And when we tried to calibrate our autopilot at the dock, we had to take the rudder all the way to port, all the way to starboard. I think that those steering cables, we know that those steering cables caught up some of the NEMA 2000 wires, shredded one. And when that happened, we blew a fuse in our autopilot computer. Um, and so we've identified the problems. We've already replaced the NEMA 2000 cable that got shredded. We had some extras. I climbed down there and zip tied some things away from the steering cable so it shouldn't happen again. Uh, and Kieran and Alan are gonna jump in the tender. We've just anchored outside of City Marina. They're gonna jump in the tender and then they're gonna head to Lowe's Home Improvement, go pick up a few fuses, come back. Should plug it in and if we have depth and charts again, then well, that means we shouldn't run aground, hopefully again, because we'll have depth in charts. And then also it means we can go on our way and start heading south again. So that's where we're at. That inside there is a fuse that we just replaced. That is what broke when the cable in the back broke. So it did what it was supposed to do. It tripped. Back out of business. <laughs> I said, Boom. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Get free! Get free to maneuver! All towboat US drivers are legends. Waving goodbye to my hometown was a little emotional because I don't plan on coming back for a while. The goal? A seven year circumnavigation and there is no plan B. As Charlie settled in, we used the last few hours of sunlight to practice sailing as a crew. As night approached, we motored a few hours to find the wind and had a damn smooth ride. As the night schedule began, we had a perfect angle and got the sails back out again. We even broke out Charlie's new fancy collar. Pretty snazzy, right? So it's eight o'clock on the first night. I'm taking the first shift from seven to 10. 
and the conditions are great. Like, I'm not complaining. Um, our sail shape's good. You can see some of those spreader lights. We're quite happy. No luffing. Our true wind speed is 13.1. Speed over grounds, we'll say it's five knots, but it's more like 4.8. And it's a really comfortable ride. Like no complaints here. People are easily sleeping downstairs, I think. Not too much waves, so for now, we're not gonna adjust anything. We're on a really good course. I'll show you the course. There's our course there on Savvy Navi. It's working our way down the coastline. Not staying too deep out. We just gotta watch. Coming out from Folly Beach Inlet right here. Gets a little shadow, so we're gonna steer clear of that. But we're just gonna ride this course until the wind changes. This is really comfortable. Hey, special announcement. Today is no simple day. Today is Kieran's birthday. <laughs> On the ocean. All right, so last time we spoke, it was night shifts. Karen, what's going on right now, man? Um, so we got some, we're sailing upwind, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass because we have to keep tacking a lot. So during the night, during the night for the most part, we were able to just keep going straight down the coast. But then we started going upwind and at that point we had to just kind of keep tacking back and forth. And we're coming up to down here, this is Savannah right here. And there's a bunch of boats that you can see on our radar. And you can also see them out there. <laughs> there's the five massive barges. <laughs> and so we're just planning on how we're going to avoid that right now. Yeah. Whether we're going to tack now or wait a little bit longer and do it after the reef that we're going to be passing soon off of our port side. So, we'll see. I say we play chicken with them and see who wins. The other thing that's going on is that we are trying to teach Charlie to go to the bathroom. His little pee pad is normally up front, but we brought it back here because there's some grates. You gotta go pee, dude. I, it's okay. I feel so bad for you. He's he's such a good dog. He's trained well, and now he doesn't want to go pee in the house. But you gotta go pee. It's okay. That's outside. Go outside. Go pee pee. Go outside. Go pee pee. No. What's the matter? What's the matter? Go outside. Go pee pee. You are not gonna pee in the bed, okay? You will pee out here. You will pee on this moving boat. We got some much needed rest and I jumped back behind the helm. A few hours later, we found what would be the best sailing of the trip. This is man's 23rd birthday and you're sailing 51 foot sailboat going eight knots. Look at this shit. She's a beauty. Look at the bow in the water. Yeah, baby. All these cargo ships are anchored out here outside of Savannah and it was convenient to tack right between them so we're going to get a cool view and look at us burying the bow! Ow! <laughs> I'm happy, this is great. It's quite peaceful when I'm not out here screaming like a banshee. We are lifted. I don't know, the camera never seems to do it justice. But we are lifted up, baby. Look at that bow in the water. Ugh. We're about, we're pretty close to burying that rail over there, aren't we? Don't worry, by the way, I should have a life jacket on, but I'm, I'm gripped in. And it's actually pretty calm out here. Although we're healed up, it's a pretty smooth ride. This is a great boat. 1994 Beneteau 510. She is sailing good. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God is good, and so is his boat. For some of the crew, this trip was the first time sailing. And although it's a case of the blind leading the blind, we started to get the hang of it, so vibes were pretty high and we sort of had a dance party that literally lasted hours. So we're gonna do some fishing. We're out here just tacking away, moving slow. This is the Black Bart Dolphin Tuna Pack we got at West Marine. Oh wait, yeah, somebody had asked in our comments uh, 
like, are you actually fishing for dolphin? And I figured out dolphin is like a kind of tuna. Yeah, by the way, dolphin is a type of tuna. It's, we're not fishing not for like mammal. bottlenose mammal. <laughs> mammals. Um, this is the lucky fishing rod that came with the boat. We inherited it. And we realized after we first used it and took it off the shelf, the reason it was left is because there's no handle on it. So it's basically a fancy hand line, but it's already rigged up and everything. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stick it over the side. First I must duct tape our rod holders and then we'll get going. But I'd like to consult the group. Which one of these bad boys are we gonna use? Tuna candy. So we're gonna try tuna candy again. Look at that, dude. Alrighty. This is the lucky lady right here. Or gentleman, whatever you're feeling. <laughs> See what happens. With the line in tow, we had a few hours of smooth sailing. I sat back and soaked up that irreplaceable feeling of being out there with no land in sight. By the way, we're even getting better at launching this drone while underway. Sick. Nice. <laughs> it's catching one more. We're yeah. moving at this thing because subscribe. Soon as, as soon as I... All right, fast forward. We're 22 knots of wind, so we're gonna reef, and we don't have our reef lines in, so we're just gonna drop the main sail. You know what's funny about sailing is there's like these moments of like brief panic borderline panic where we're like, okay, shit, we must do this now. Like just now it was 22 knots of sustained wind and we're like, okay, we should put the main sail away. Take more to board if you can. Probably should have done it sooner. And when we put it away and we lose, what, a half a knot of speed? So it's a good decision. And then it's immediately followed by a moment like this. I'm like sitting in a bean bag, <laughs> warm, eating cheesecake that my mother made me. Thank you, mom. And we're about to listen to some Dave Matthews. But like there's moments of just like perfect calm awesomeness. And then there's moments of like, like, oh my God, get out of here, help. Like, this goes into the charging point. You know? Yeah. I thought it was this thing. I was like, how does this come off? Uh, it's great. It's really great. And so is this cheesecake. It's the perfect height. That's a good boy. Charlie's spy. You gonna stay in there? <laughs> Look at my wiener. <laughs> As the weather conditions changed, the crew started to feel a bit sick. So I hopped on hose duty and prepared us for a long, restless night. All right, so here's the update. It was a rough night. Definitely a rough night. We got really close to the shoals. Uh, so what happened is we came inland closer to shore to find a calmer sea state because it was like 26 knots of wind not far off offshore so we came in as tight as we could and then we had a problem with shoaling uh, i guess shoaling from my understanding is the seafloor building up with silt and sand and they can change and the charts aren't always reliable and so we got really close to where we only saw a few feet under the um the the, the keel and we actually bump bottom for a bit um, but names shall not be named um, everyone's feeling like shit except for me and I'm feeling like shit because everyone else is feeling like shit and so what we also have to do is I'm looking at some weather apps one of the things I'm looking at is predict wind this is where we are we're about to pass the border from Georgia to Florida which is good we're making pretty good time and today we will pass Jacksonville my goal is to head to St. Augustine it's 50 miles away we're doing about six knots you can see there I've gone through Savvy Navy and I have found some anchorages read some reviews um, double checked a few apps and, and I, I, I have one in St. Augustine that I think we're gonna we're gonna hang out in for a couple days. I don't want to stop for two days, but we're not outrunning this wind. And so we have to go ahead and make the, the, the choice to have a bailout. 
So this is predict wind. Today as it develops, it's a good day, good day, good day, good day. And then watch what happens on Thursday. This is tomorrow at 3 a.m. All this red coming in and it shoots down really south in Florida. We're not gonna make it. And it's gonna linger there all through Thursday. And this is Friday, 6 a.m. It's gonna linger, linger, linger. I want nothing to do with that. That's not a comfortable ride for folks. And then Saturday, 9 a.m., you see it starts to clear off. So Saturday, we'll start making our way back down, which poses a problem because Alan has a flight in a couple days in Miami, so we were hoping to make him to Miami and drop him, but he's gonna have to figure out alternate transportation. It bumps me out, but, you know. You had a great time. It's just you just seasick. Seasick, but seasick, but chipper. So that's our plan. And um, you know the the 27 year old I can do anything man in me says, oh well, let's just full tilt ahead with the engine and let's outrun the storm and hug the coast and just you know have some bad weather for a day. But the 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 learning captain in me says i should not do that and we should stop and get our anchor really dug in have a nice hot meal watch a movie and wait it out so saint augustine it is in an effort to make it there on time we motored pretty much all day i soaked up time with the loved ones watched that rod that never seems to bend over and surfed the waves it was honestly a really good morning as we came into port, it got a little sketchy with depth. Some of the area is uncharted due to rapid shoaling. We made it through, however, and happily dropped the hook in what proved to be the perfect anchorage. One small problem we had is that the foot switch for our anchor windlass had stopped working. Water had come in over the bow and destroyed a butt connector, but it's a pretty easy fix. All right, so we freaking made it. St. Augustine's beautiful coming in. Like the beautiful American, like colonial houses, Jeeps and trucks on the beach. The beaches here are stunning. This is our anchorage. We have a few other people around. We're in like, what would you say, 13, 14 feet of water. We came in at low tide. You can't see anything, but yeah, you can see. There's this bridge here. My girlfriend, her cousin, there's a restaurant right over there, so we're gonna go see her, have some drinks at the rooftop. But, um, yeah, we freaking made it. I'm stoked. Let me walk back inside so you can see me. We made it just before sundown, and getting in here was hectic. It was kind of scary because all the shoaling, it would say on the charts 22 feet of water, and then we'd get there and it'd say negative one foot of water because we have an offset on our transducer that's for like six or seven feet, and our draft is 5.9 feet so we got real close and we had called we were calling towboat us to come try to escort us in and show us the the way to get to the anchorage but we just we finally got it um as a team but i'm really stoked we're here i think you know although it was just the first three days of the trip because it was the first three days i think some people you know we were just we want to ease everyone into some things and People were starting to feel seasick, and um, but it's a good thing that we're holding out here. This is the perfect place for us. There's a West Marine here, so we could do a couple repairs. That switch, that excuse me, that switch, that foot pedal switch on the deck for the windlass went bad just because we were taking some waves over the top, and I didn't seal it in because we were in a rush to leave, and I need 5200 underneath it. Uh, water got in and got to the butt connectors and fried it. But quick fix, we fixed it. I'm gonna have a drink, uh, and we're gonna go out for the town. Kieran's feeling good. That's the first time I've seen you shirtless in a while, Kieran. That's debatable. I'm actually not feeling good. Oh, damn. The restaurant closes at 9, so you need to hurry up. I gotta go. That's my cue. Bye. <laughs> Two hours later. Drinks. Where's this lead chase? To jump on people. Her food in the way was he does. delicious, and you missed out. We had a big night. We went and we went to her cousin's place, and it was fucking delicious. Tasty menu, cocktails, Kieran missed out because he was feeling sick. 
And we're very sad that you weren't there. Give him a kiss on the cheek. Please don't do that. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay, there you so go. Good, right. Baby. Anyway, I think it's time to. Puppy, watch out, baby. What are you doing? Did they give you something sauce? Yes, they did. Okay. We woke up this morning. Oh, yeah. We woke up the next day with one thing on our mind. Heading to the beach. But first I had to shower on the stern, pass Charlie's smell test, and get the vibes going a bit. Our first time beaching the tender was seamless, and we were stoked to properly stretch our legs. Happy dog, happy guy. Look at that. Mi familia. Mi amigo. Have you ever seen a man more blessed? No you haven't. Short answer. My girlfriend thought it would be a good time to get Charlie more used to the water. I guess you can say it went pretty well. We had a bit of rough housing for a while, then it was time to head to the grocery store and do some provisioning. Oh wait, can't forget Charlie. The party vibes definitely carried on once we left, by the way. Uh, Chief Officer McCary, you soon to be super yacht deckhand, Yee. tie us up with style. Show, show him the flick, show him the flick. Ow! Ow! One of the things we bought at the grocery store were mini bottles. They didn't exactly last long. <laughs> we put a cap on an epic day with the crew's new favorite game, Exploding Kittens. Potato! I think the potato cat's my favorite. Atlantic gets cup filled, filled with Tito's from our lovely patron, Jeffrey Howenstein. Shout out to you, Jeffrey. Thank you for supplying today's buzz. <laughs> mm. So the tender ride that morning might have been a little rough. About three, about three months ago, Chase soaked me doing this exact thing, and my phone hasn't charged since. <laughs> <laughs> The town was beautiful, and we were so excited to get to the Dini Dock. That boat is big. That... Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. After a bit of finagling, we headed down to the marina office to do our check-in. In and out, easy process. $13. We have a pass for our Dini, and we'll stick this on the outboard. And we didn't even know this. We thought we were just paying to put the Dini here. But now we get to use the hot showers here. So tomorrow morning we can come and do some laundry, which is nice because Charlie decided to pee on our duvet. My squishmallow. And her squishmallow, which is... I'm pissed about. I don't blame you. We took in the sights that day and just had a great time. St. Augustine is a stunning place to stop in. We passed a flag shop and I took the opportunity to grab us a quarantine flag because our next trip will be leaving the U.S. Oh. <laughs> Pizza, baby. Hot pizza, and we don't have to do dishes. And Alan has elected to buy us all a slice. What a guy. Oh my god. Chicken parmigiana. That's me. Frederick Douglass once spoke here, and now I shall eat pizza here. Kieran's from New Jersey. This place says it's the second best pizza in the US. So, I doubt it. I guess you'll be the judge. It's too, hot. It, it's too hot for me to eat. I'm too much of a pussy. Huh? We gotta wait a second. I know it's just pizza in Florida, but this is like the first stop with the boat. This is the first time we're like exploring and having fun. It doesn't mean as much to these guys as it means to me. They're like, sweet pizza, but for me, I'm like, wow, I'm finally cruising, you know? I feel great. Don't worry, y'all. Of course, Charlie got to try some. We checked out some more sites, the history, the beautiful streets, and even an old Spanish fortress. My favorite part, though, was our stroll past the anchorage. I'm definitely a boat nerd. As it does, day turned into night, so we headed back to the marina, cruised back to the boat, and finally delivered on Kieran's birthday wish. Goonies never say die. Sadly, Alan had to leave the boat early the next morning to head back to Europe. Now that the weather had passed, we planned to leave at high tide that afternoon, but had to tackle some projects first. Kieran set up the jack lines, which we forgot to do before leaving Charleston. Then we had to dismantle the aft cabins to get to our fuel tanks. 
We removed the senders and visually inspected our fuel level, and I managed to get one of the fuel gauges working. Shout out to the mechanic who replaced them in Fort Lauderdale months ago. Next, I installed a check valve on our bilge pump to stop backflow so we can leave the pump on auto. That's two big weights off my shoulders. I also wanted to prevent the windlass switch from frying again, so I removed it, broke out the 5200, loaded her up in an attempt to stop water intrusion, and sealed her back down. Next, we installed a coolant reservoir, topped off all our fluids, and gave the engine bay a really good cleaning. It was also time to clean out the sea strainer, a very stinky job. Here you go, folks. The luxuries of sailing around the world. With a productive morning behind us, we raised the tender and strapped her on tight so she wouldn't sway around. It was time to fire up the engine, weigh anchor, and head on down the road. My girlfriend took the helm and smashed it as usual. She's the real captain around here, by the way. And she honestly looks a lot better doing it. With another wave goodbye, we exited the channel and re-entered the swell. Charlie wasn't stoked about it, so we were sure to provide him lots of emotional support. Then I figured we'd slap on some burgies. So it's low wind, almost no wind, uh, all of tonight. So we have a direct line to Port of St. John. Uh, we've got our heading set and our autopilot to that waypoint. Uh, and it should, we should be getting there around 7, 8 a.m. tomorrow. So we're just motoring uh, and we're checking the engine every hour. Uh, she seems to be doing good. Touch wood, we'll move on with some wood underneath me. Um, and so now we're chilling, grilling burgers. My girlfriend's getting some rest because she's first up on night watch. We're doing, with three people, we're doing four hour shifts. So she is seven to 11 p.m. I am 11, 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. And then Kieran is 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, so seven to seven, breaking up into three, but I'll be sleeping in the cockpit the whole time. But uh, food is good for morale, so burgers it is. And yeah, we're chilling. It's some big rolly swells. They're not big, um, per se. I mean, you feel them, but they're spread apart, and so we're just kind of corkscrewing a little bit. But yeah, life's good. Well, folks, it's official. I have a new favorite spot. This is the second time I've been up here. This is on top of the boom on our mainsail. Bolstered in by the sail bag. It's very comfortable when it's relatively calm. I would not want to be up here when it's any more rough. Because obviously the higher up you are, the more you sway back and forth. But the swell is very chill. It's not dead calm, but it's nice to be up here right now for the moment. I want to show you guys golden hour. Sun is going down. It's a peaceful but also scary feeling because I know that the night is a furnace. Well, it's been an eventful morning. Uh, early this morning, a night watch. My lovely girlfriend saw a red glow on the coastline, and it's the same thing we saw on the way up from Fort Lauderdale. It was a SpaceX launch. They're actually launching satellites for Starlink, the internet that we use out here. And it's really cool to watch. Just video doesn't do it justice. It's one of those things that you kind of have to be out here to see it. We also saw some bioluminescence off the back of the boat. Another hard thing to video, but just stunning. Uh, and this morning we had quite the performance by a big pack of dolphins, like rubbing up against Grace, just playing in the bow. It was awesome. Good cheering. Baby's like 20. Oh. Here it is. Hi. A uh, sad thing that happened this morning is I lost my favorite fishing lure. His name was Tuna Candy.
He caught us one fish on the way up from Fort Lauderdale. But as soon as the rod bent over, I went to grab it and uh, snap with the line. Oh no, tuna candy. Did he take it? Yeah, it's gone, dude, he took it. So it was a big fish or a shark, I don't know. But now we have another one out. And I have this trusty hand line out. Which would be hell if I caught a big fish. It would be quite the fight. But I don't think that one's gonna break. So that's why it's out. So wish us luck. So now we're doing about six knots. Off of Pocanama. This is the danger area for falling debris from rocket launches. We charted a course and we're, we're doing well. It's 10 in the morning. My lovely girlfriend is sun tanning, looking absolutely unbelievable. And Charlie might be a little seasick, we don't know. He hasn't been really wanting food this morning. That being said, he hasn't gone to the bathroom yet. It takes him a little bit to adjust. Just like all of us. But I'm adjusting well and I'm happy. Life is good. We're gonna listen to some music and just chill. You guys should really be here. It's freaking great. Unbelievable. I must say, sailing has kicked our butts a couple times. We've definitely learned a few things already from mistakes. Um, but I will also say that it's pretty easy to figure this thing out. Like, you point into the wind, you put up the mainsail, take out the headsail, or just put out the headsail and see what happens. You know what I mean? We got pretty good, good idea where to start, but we put the sails up, we went in doubt, let them out. That day was pretty relaxing for the most part, but that night was the roughest of the trip for sure. So it's the last morning, we're about to get to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we are probably four hours away. I just woke up. I went down at 3 a.m. and said uh, I needed to get some sleep. And I wake up and I hear that I missed a bunch of cool stuff. So one, Charlie finally went pee on his turf pad. And two, my hand line, the, fi the fish had been killing me on this trip. I, l I lost one of my nice lures that I got from West Marine because the fishing line on that rod snapped. And then I had a hand line out, which somebody gave me. I thought, surely this is not going to break. It's literally like rope. And <laughs> fucking apparently a swordfish took off in the air with it this morning, and well, I lost I don't another know. one. Kieran thinks it's like a spearfish. I don't even know what. I'm not really versed uh, on fish. I wake up and they say, hey, you lost another lure, and we saw some fish with a giant bill jumping out of the water, so. I'm not going to get upset about it. Uh, anyways, um, the boat's done well, um, oh, but we have Sorry. Intermission. Charlie's doing well. <laughs> last night he was not loving it because the swell last night was like two meters. But now that we're south enough that we're inside the islands of the Caribbean, it's sheltering us from some swell. But we have some issues with the engine, still small oil leak, um, which I think is actually going to resolve itself. It's a simple issue. Um, still a small coolant leak from the heat exchanger, but that one we're going to live with for a while. It's really, really, really small, um, and I can feed it coolant for a little bit, uh, so I don't have to get a new heat exchanger. Uh, and then the belt on the pulleys on the front of the engine, the timing belt, is squeaking, and we can smell burning rubber. And it sounds like something I used to have in my Jeep Wrangler, so I think I know it's the belt. But the weirdest thing is that three separate times we turn the electric kettle on to make coffee and then it starts making this noise at the exact same time. So and I have no we idea have, why. We haven't really had a hot so, coffee in two days. <laughs> so I'm gonna get uh, some answers on that one, but uh, that's that's all we gotta do. We're about to fly to LA for a couple days, uh, go do some work, and then come back with a few small jobs to do in Fort Lauderdale for the boat and into the Bahamas. I'm really stoked. Like, there's some scary parts of this trip, you know, that were maybe not so comfortable, um, but the engine has gotten us here so far. We've run it like 70 hours or something. Um, Too much for my liking, but at we've, the same time, like. We've run the engine a lot, because we didn't have a lot of wind, or the wind was wrong, and, um, you know, so we've, run, we've, we've motored a lot this trip from Charleston. 
but it's proven to me that the engine's doing a lot better. Uh, and then some of the issues we're having, we can nurse and prepare for. Uh, and we sailed a bit, you know, a good Thank bit. Thank you to our new mechanic, Thomas Weaver. Yeah, cool shout out there. to our new mechanic, Thomas Weaver. Thank you very much. Um, well, I guess the, the sad thing is, since we've left, I'm the new mechanic. Definitely oh a, definitely a step down. Now. <laughs> but it's okay, I have Thomas's phone number. Um, but yeah, we're motor sailing right now. Charlie's finally relieved himself, so he's passed kind of, the hell out. Kind of. We're gonna go try to link up with Alex and Mads. And yeah, let's have a good time. We did it, high five. I know it wasn't the best, but uh, we, it's a big trip that we did ourselves. So I'm proud. Who's Karen? Are you naked in here? <laughs> One thing I'm super grateful of is that I get to bring my dog with me. Charlie's getting a bit older, and he's definitely living his retirement years out in style. In fact, sometimes I wish I could trade places with him. The sight of cargo ships coupled with high rises on the shoreline could only mean one thing. We had made it back to Fort Lauderdale. As we entered the channel, Grace was honestly turning some heads. I mentioned to my girlfriend that the boat is in a lot different shape than it was when we left the yard here only a few months ago. She looked at me and said, so is the captain. That honestly made my day. I know I have so far to go and so much to learn, but I desperately needed a win. And with 500 miles under my belt, things are finally looking up. We managed to avoid all the water traffic and get through the first two bridges, piece of cake. Now, this is gonna be a little cheesy, but stick with me. I'm out here chasing a dream, a crazy difficult dream of sailing around the world and being a YouTuber. And I'm sure you have a dream, maybe a similar dream, maybe one that you're intimidated by, but if an absolute doorknob like myself with my collective two days of sailing courses can manage to completely renovate a 51-foot yacht and sail that yacht 500 miles with a band of misfit mates, well, I reckon anything's possible. And I just want to say that whatever that dream is that's weighing on your heart, go after it. Don't settle and know that we believe in you. Finally, we rounded the corner to Sunrise Bay, the anchorage where we experienced our week from hell not so long ago. As always, we spun the boat around to face the same direction as our neighbors, dropped the hook, and back down on her to dig it in. Consider this passage officially dusted. Guys, we're gonna end the trip here. Um, tune in next week to see us go from Fort Lauderdale to the Bahamas, finally, uh, we hope. And uh, the boat's doing well, and I wanna say it's very much in part to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping us get through this really tough time. We've had a lot of unexpected costs uh, and we're full time on YouTube and Instagram and this stuff. So we, you know, we really appreciate the support. I really appreciate everyone watching. Everyone in the comments who's giving me advice, it really means the world to me. Charlie is appreciative, but uh, we're gonna sit here in suntan and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm the king of the castle. I'm the king of the castle. La 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 la. Do this. Do that. Oh yeah, well, oh, the land of the free and the home of the doesn't feel good. How about your fucking We're pet? very sad for Alan. Hello everyone. Welcome to finding an anchorage for the night. Today we've um we've come into the channel. Twenty-one feet on the charts. Zero feet when we went through it. So what is your strategy? Is it strategy or is it luck? I think it, I think it's luck. <laughs> we freaking did it. I can't believe it. Feels good. Now Charlie's gotta go take a shit. <laughs> <laughs>